So today I'm going to show you guys how to make a racing timer that basically will display the time in seconds to the HUD and the player, when they cross into some imaginary finish line, uh, the timer will stop. So first thing we're going to do is make a widget. We'll call this racing timer. We'll open this up. And what we're going to do is grab a text box. We'll just stick this right here in the middle, make this a little bit bigger, and we'll put this to zero, and I'll center it. Now, you want to make sure that this text block will name timer. You want to check this little box that says is variable. And that's all we have to do for that. Next thing we want to do is I'm going to bring in a trigger box. And this is going to represent the finish line. Make this a little bit wider. And I'm going to come down here and make sure we can see this visible. And I don't want it hidden in game. So uncheck that box. And finally, we're going to go into the level blueprint. So if we go here, open level blueprint. And what I want to do is off of begin play, you can have a sequence. And just right here, I'm going to create the widget we just made. And the owning player is going to be get player controller. So it's going to go to player zero. It's going to go onto their uh, HUD. And I'm going to right click here and promote this to a variable. We'll call this timer HUD ref. And what we want to look for is the racing timer here. Now that we have it, we're going to add to viewport and I actually made a cast to my player character beginning character so you guys can do this for whatever the actor is that you want to stop the timer when it overlaps the finish line and then what we're going to do is I'm going to minimize this I'm going to highlight this trigger box and then I'm going to go back into the level blueprint, right click, create a reference to trigger box. Nope, sorry. I'm going to right click and say add event for trigger box, collision, add on actor begin overlap. And what we want to do now is grab our player reference that I made up here. Same way I right clicked on this after I cast to our beginning character, I right clicked here and it opened up this to create a variable, promote to variable. So that's what I did already. And I'm going to grab this player reference here, get. I'm going to make a branch node and drag off of this and say equal. So if this other actor equals the player, we're going to stop the timer. Now, if you remember in this timer HUD, we'll drag this out, we'll get it. And what I want to do is get that text variable from within. So I'll say get timer. What did I call it? Get timer. Get. Why is that not showing up? Racing timer. Let me see if I can get it from here. Get timer. There it is. I'm not exactly sure why it's not working from this one. It should. I'm not 
I think this is a bad cast here. So try this again. Racing timer. Delete. And now this should work. Yep. So for whatever reason, that was a bad node there. So we go into our HUD. We get the timer variable out of there. And we're going to say set text. So this is going to actually set the text of that timer. So right now it just says zero. We're going to set that. And I'm going to set that using a timeline. So if we search for timeline, say stopwatch or whatever, I'm going to double click on this. And I'm going to go right here to add event track. And all you need to do is right click in here somewhere and say add key float, add key to curve float, time zero and you want it to loop and we'll make the length one second compile and save so now this new track here will run every second which is what we want and what we want it to do is update this variable here the timer so we're going to create a variable here and we'll call this time and what we're going to do is drag this out, get it, and we're going to drag off of here and say increment. And what this does is every time this is called, it adds one to the time and then sets it. And this will be run every second. And then we're just going to drag this here and say set text, and it's automatically going to convert that from an integer into a text and then it's going to set this text in the widget. And what we want to do, add another pin here, and play this from start. I'm going to right click, custom, we're going to add a custom event, and I'm going to call this stop. And I'm going to use this to stop the timer. And we want the timer to stop. I'm going to move this out down here when the player overlaps the trigger volume. So when this is true, we're going to call stop. And this should stop the timer and prevent this from updating any further. All right, let's compile and save. And we will test this out. So you see our widget is counting up, four, five, six, and then I cross the finish line and it stops. All right, hope that was helpful guys, and if it was, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you around.